What are some moments in movies that made you go up? It doesn't work like that. Rolling out of a speeding car. Nah man. You're about to look like you made out with a cheese grater. Also related to cars in movies. Not every car is easily driftable. Don't you dare balls me mister. Hitman's bodyguard into believing that you can drift a Ford minivan in the same way as Ken Block. My dad was a pipe engineer for 35 years. Every time he watches the Titanic, when Jack is handcuffed to the pipe, he has to point out to everyone in the room how the curved elbow pipe in the shot didn't exist at the time. The correct setup should have been two straight pieces soldered together to make a corner pipe. I love him and his obscure dad facts. Here's one you can give back to him. In Back to the Future when Marty plays with the band like the dance in 1955 he's playing a Gibson 345, which didn't come out until 1958. Almost any scene involving someone being shot or stabbed. I've been in IT for 35 years, so dang near every movie that has any tech in it has some stupid crap. It's even more irksome when they could have been accurate, but didn't. People in movies being scientists, meaning they are good at all forms of science, biology, electrical engineering, physics, programming, communication protocols, advanced mathematics, hacking, robotics. Sure, you could have some knowledge in all of those fields, but specializing in just one of them takes decades. These characters are usually wizards in all fields. Pretty much any scene that involves biologists. Look. The DNA is a perfect match as the computer superimposes two identical graphics that are basically just the symbol for DNA. And the fact that it takes them a few seconds to get the results. Avalanches. Particularly when someone gets buried and then just bursts out of the snow unharmed. Avalanche debris sets like concrete. You're not getting out without help. And most deaths injuries occur from being bashed up during the slide, so you're not likely to emerge unscathed if it's big enough to bury you. A fake. Trauma occurs from terrain traps, not necessarily the size. In NA more deaths are from trauma whereas in Europe, where above treeline terrain is much more accessible, fatalities are typically deep burials. Also, sound triggering avalanches is a big one. Crawling through air ducts. Most aren't that big. Or they aren't that strong to not bend or break at all. Yes they are also incredibly filthy. I have taken out enough duct work to know that you could almost create another person with how many skin cells end up in your air ducts. I also am not doubting the strength of the large threaded support some duct work has. I'm doubting the strength of the 20 gauge metal to not end bend in the slightest under the weight of a full grown man. Pumping the shotgun every time you mean business. You're just ejecting fresh shells onto the floor. Especially when it's a break action double barrel shotgun. 90% of the depictions of women going into labor. It's rarely mom feels fine all day. Suddenly has one sharp contraction. Water immediately breaks and makes a puddle on the floor. Everyone I know who's given birth has had at least a few hours contracting before the water breaking. If it breaks at all. And then it can be even longer before you're in active labor. An explosion nearby and everyone talks and hears fine. I love that scene and the other guys about this. Goddammit tinnitus. You are a cruel mistress. Our hero is beaten. Stabbed and shot. Next scene he wakes up bandaged in the hospital. Within seconds. He yanks out all the tubes and wires. Jumps out of bed. Finds his. Suddenly clean. Clothes. And rushes out to continue his quest. In the next scene he's full of energy as he pursues his foe. And while his face may have a single scratch or bandage cut, usually above one eye, there's no sign of what would ordinarily be a yellow purple swollen pulpy mess with blood red dyes. In Interstellar when they have combines running through a field of green corn, they spent a ton of time getting little details of astrophysics right, then fell flat on their face in the depiction of farming. And the best part is, I read somewhere that they actually did grow and harvest that corn to pay for some costs of the movie, so it's not like they didn't know how harvesting actually works. Every time they perform CPR in a movie, bonus points if the victim wakes up immediately and is totally fine and talking. 5 seconds of chest compressions. Oh no, it's not working. Stops chest compressions. Victim looks really, really dead. Blurf. Water vomit geezer. Eyes open. ETC. Weeping hugging bar fest reunion. 
It's always a pet peeve of mine when in movies. They are working on a computer and the thing is constantly chirping and beeping with some kind of dumb sci-fi looking interface to it. Like dude, we all have computers now. We all know software doesn't do that and if it did it would be annoying as heck. I've even seen scenes, can't remember which movies, where they're clearly using photoshop or something similar and it's constantly making little sci-fi noises. Or the classic hackerman. 5 seconds of rapidly pressing random keys, typing something that's not even into any kind of input, pop-ups appearing faster than the human I can follow. I'm in. All the movies with science babble in them, or tech babble, all of them, at least it's pretty funny. Just stick dark energy or quantum physics somewhere. The quantum dark energy is spreading to his butt hacking is babbling about I'm in and you always have to trace the source I'm pretty sure. I'm in his hentai collection. Tracing the sources now. I watched a movie once where geologists ignored signs of a massive natural disaster, blaming it on sensors. Tell me if I'm wrong but I feel like real scientists don't hesitate to double check. Seems like scientists ignore sensors in a lot of movies. Dante's Peak, The Day After Tomorrow, Spider-Man, and 2012. I'm specifically talking about the wave. When a baby is born and it's a beautiful, squeaky clean 3-6 month old twice the size of a newborn. They are tiny, goo covered, swollen purple aliens I roll. There's an episode of Royal Pains where a girl gives birth and this child they decided to be the newborn is, I swear, literally a toddler. It's so bad I can't even be angry it's just hilarious. It's season 7 episode 8. I'm having trouble finding a clip though. Any CPR scene ever. After 10 seconds of barely any depth to the compression and slow CPR, the person is revived. It's a miracle. Which, it would be. There was a scene in the G.I. Joe Cobra movie where they torpedo icebergs, and then they sank. Yet, yeah, ice doesn't change its density to be heavier than water just because explosions. I have the perfect scientific explanation for this. That movie sucked. When someone dongs the hammer on a Glock, when they pull the fire alarm, and the sprinkler's set off, when a lighter sets a sprinkler off, it will, and all the heads go off. Each head is independent of all others, and set off by heat. Can also be set off by running into it with a scissor lift. Cough cough. Looking at you dry wallers. When hackers just spam random letters to hack. Open command prompt, change color to green. Random prompts, hacking. Colon 15 seconds of keyboard clicking, I'm in. Now we have access to all the super secret classified government files and can control anything that runs on electricity anywhere in the world. One that always gets me is when medical professionals shock a flatline heart rhythm. It doesn't seem to matter what caused them to flatline either, it's straight to the defib. Like guys, it's designed to stop the heart, with the hopes it will restart with a normal rhythm. It doesn't start a stopped heart, they will use drugs like adrenaline, I assume, not a doctor, and use CPR, for any other reason. Basically anytime they show lab work being done, they either don't wear PPE, or they do wear it but don't wear it properly. Or for the right things. Like food beverage chewing gum in a lab is a big big no. If some character in a drama TV show walked into my lab demanding results, the first thing I'd do is give them safety glasses. But anytime someone is wearing rubber latex nitrile gloves that are way too big, especially when dexterity is important, they could just flap their hand and it would fly off. It's useless. Drives me nuts. Frantically shouting taxi while hailing a cab. I heard a woman do that the other day and it shocked me because no one ever actually says that out loud like that. The protagonists and antagonists fighting on the streets and not giving a crap about thousands of people dying while the cars explodes and buildings falls. Prepare for your doom, generic man. Wait, there are civilians here, let's evacuate them first. Crap, you're right. The extent that people can get punched in the face and just keep going. No one is having Jason Bourne style fights and able to keep going for as long as they all do. Jack Bauer, dead for 4 minutes, jumping rooftop to rooftop 17 minutes later. It always takes me out of the movie when say someone will be like you'll never believe what's on the news. Put it on, their TV is off, they turn the TV on, 
and it's on the exact station of said news crew, at the exact moment they're talking about I said topic. That's not how it works, and it could be anything, not just news. They turn on the TV and it just so happens to be on what they're looking for. Just a small aspect of television movies that takes me out of it and I'm always like that's not how this works. Lol. The real scene should be you'll never believe the news then everyone pulls out their own phone and searches social media and or google for whatever small grain of information the instigator can give them. Characters making perfect sentences without stuttering or making pauses. Aaron Sorkin. We're looking at you. Most explosions. I was in ammo and it ruined most movies for me. They're still fantastic movies and I love them all. But when a building explodes you're not gonna walk out casually barely beating the flames. And those thousands of pieces of wood aren't all going to magically not impale you as they're hurdled all around you with incredible force. Also, why do all movie explosions look like gas explosions? There are other explosive substances. They don't all go boom the same way. Not a movie but in the show you when he gives that guy the latte with nuts in it and he drops dead less than a minute later. Now, nah, it takes a bit longer than that. It would be a much longer, painful demise. This is the same with people being shot in the abdomen. A bullet to the abdomen is usually the slowest way to die. It can kill you, but not in two minutes while you say goodbye to a loved one or finally give up that crucial bit of info you've been hiding all along. That thing where a tech lab procedure suddenly takes half the time because someone offers to pay more. I know, if it needs to be centrifuged for 24 hours it's still going to take 24 hours even with 100k on the table. Also not as jarring, but everyone always wakes up with perfect makeup and no one ever seems to clean their face. Even better than that, someone goes through an incredibly strenuous and lengthy ordeal and still has perfect makeup. Watched something recently where a woman came back from being held captive in the Middle East as a prisoner of war for 10 years and as she was carried, on a stretcher, off the military plane she looked like she was about to go to the Oscars. Full contouring. When someone shoots 1000000000000000000 bullets with a single magazine and a pistol but then it runs out when they have an actual shot at someone. I count 6 shots. I count 2 guns. Pretty much any scene where there's some magic computer program that turns blurry, heavily pixelated images into razor sharp photos? Yeah, that doesn't exist. Enhance. Movies set a long time ago trying to emulate people from 500-2000 years ago but they all have perfect skin and white teeth. Maybe it's because of how sensitive I am about how awful my teeth are, but I've really begun to notice how everyone in a movie has perfect teeth unless they are a prisoner of some kind. Prisoners apparently never brush their teeth but everyone else on earth does, and flosses, and it's all pearly white. The way people in the military talk in movies just kills me. I don't care so much about getting some details wrong, and these days the advisors seem to do pretty well with keeping it realistic enough to pass. But no military advisor can help bad dialogue. I'll put it this way. Actors are so bad at being convincing military members. Ah. Liami famously did the role himself in Full Metal Jacket after being initially hired on only as an advisor. But specifically, it's all of the stupid crap writers think we say to each other. No one will ever ask permission to speak freely. They just freaking speak. We don't salute constantly. It's used as a greeting. Not something we do as we leave to carry out orders. We are not that formal. It gets ridiculous watching these actors talk like robot people and overuse jargon. Like, I'm not using brevity codewords in normal conversation. Unless I'm being a smartass. Military people just talk normally. Formality is pretty much limited to ceremonies. When you're in trouble, or if you are addressing people way senior to you in some kind of formal setting. Even then, plain speak is more common than over the tops of sandwiches, and out of place jargon. The amount of time between responses in phone conversations. Hi mom. 1.37 seconds later. What do you mean Larry and his ferret were hit by a scooter in Moscow? Telling co-workers to cover your shift on the fly like okay like I don't have to run it by the manager and the manager doesn't have to do a whole bunch of computer crap beforehand to fix the hours up. I've worked in the service industry most of my career and this has always bothered me. That, and the bookstore clerk living in a million dollar loft in the city. 
EP pen usage. You have to call the ambulance or rush to the hospital after administering it. EP pens are not a magical fix they simply buy you enough time to get to medical care. It bothers me relentlessly when movies show someone being given an EP pen and they just take a big gasp of air and go back to eating dinner like nothing happened. Sorry if someone has already commented this. I didn't want to scroll through all of them. Chloroform. It takes several minutes to knock you out, and you won't be out for that long. I promise I know this because we use chloroform to clean stuff in the lab by internet, and my advisor told me this, in case the FBI is reading this. Not to mention the concentration of chloroform needed to knock someone out has to be extremely precise and depends on the person's body weight and such. Too little and there's no knockout, too much, and you have a corpse instead of an unconscious body. If someone is falling, and say Superman catches them. They are actually fricked because the forces involved are still going to tear them apart. Superman would have to catch them and decelerate them over time, but this almost never happens. He just catches them. You also can't just lift an enormously heavy object. The object has to have the structural integrity to remain in one piece. All that pressure at one point, Superman's hand, would make the object break apart. Okay. Superman was just the first example I could think of, and they happen to have explained it. It happens in lot of other things, particularly the whole catching someone who's falling thing. Spider-Man tried to save Gwen Stacy and just broke her back inches off the ground. Scenes that involve swimming. I try to hold my breath whenever a movie character, non-superhero fantasy, dives underwater and try to hold it as long as he she is swimming or submerged, I end up dying 9 stroke 10 times. I mean there's probably a lot of things to consider but the amount of time some characters can hold their breaths is superhuman. Practice makes huge difference. Pearl harvesters who started practicing in childhood can work user water for 6 plus mins with a single breath. The record is around 12 minutes Ike. In the disaster movies people don't hoard toilet paper. And now, we all know how unrealistic that is. The neutrinos are mutating minus 2012. Neutrinos can't freaking mutate. They can't even decay. Actually they do. They flavor change randomly. The number of neutrinos coming from the sun were found to be off in their number and someone figured out they were changing to other flavors. He won a Nobel Prize. You have been visited by the hamster of joy. Comment I like chicken to live a happy and full of joy like the joy hamster life. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.